Hello, thank you so much for joining me today for Give Him 15. The title of today's post is Answered Prayer for House Speaker. We've been praying much for the right person to become the Speaker of the House. This is such an important position. Not only are they second in line to the U.S. presidency, but the Speaker controls so much of what occurs or takes place in Congress. God has given us a miracle in the election of Congressman Michael Johnson to this position. He is a godly man raised up for such a time as this. I do not know him, but have several friends who do and who attest to his qualifications, integrity, and heart for the Lord. I was with a group of several hundred people in Texas this week, and through God's sovereign orchestration, we were praying fervently for Congressman Johnson while the vote was taking place. Many others also prayed diligently for him, as the following encouraging article by our friend Cynthia Dunbar demonstrates. Cynthia serves as a board member for our friends at Intercessors for America, who first released the article. And Cynthia shares, God at work in the speaker race. The enemy is a defeated foe, she says. He holds no cards. The only way he can hold any sway is to deceive. This has always been his strategy even from his first attack on humanity. His strategy has been to convey to us that he holds some coveted gift that God has not already bestowed. In short, his tactic is to try to convince the bride that God is holding out on us and that there's still something that we must receive only from him, the enemy. Well, that was a lie then. Because mankind was already like God as we were created in the image and likeness of God. And it is a lie now. Satan has nothing. All authority has been given to Christ Jesus. And we, as joint heirs with him, need to finally realize this and begin walking in the victory Christ has purchased for us. We need to be living and moving and having our being in the resurrected Christ, not anxiously pleading for God to still move on our behalf. This is, this I am convinced, Cynthia says, is what it means for us to, to be finally manifest as, to be finally manifested as the sons of God for which all creation is groaning. And I certainly agree. She continues, so, why the lengthy theological reminder? Because far too often, she says, I see the enemy getting us to take our eyes off Christ and the completed works of the cross, placing them onto the chaos of the circumstances that surround us. By thus causing us to shift our gaze, he can begin spinning a false narrative. He's the father of lies after all, that is what he does, lie. But to quote a beautiful hymn, the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. It's time for the church to realize that we're operating not to gain victory, but from a place of victory, victory in Jesus. And he watches over his word to perform it in this testimony, she says, I'm going to share with that I share with you. You will see that he is indeed watching over the promise that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous does avail much. The good news of the gospel is that we are, we are righteous as Christ has taken away our filthy rags and replaced them with his righteousness. On Saturday, October 21st, 2023, I was sitting alone in prayer, she says. 
praying very generically for the world and for our nation. Out of nowhere, the Lord spoke very clearly to me the following. Pray boldness over Congressman Michael Johnson in this season. Pray that he may walk in strength, tempered in grace, that he may boldly speak forth truth, that his words will be a beacon of hope to the nation. I then called a friend, she says, a solid Christian who is congressional district director for another congressman, told her what I had heard. She informed me that Representative Johnson's name was not even being considered for speaker. And she was curious as to why I was praying this specifically over him. I told her simply, because the Lord has told me to pray for him. She then agreed to pray along with me. Fast forward to Wednesday afternoon. I received a call from this same friend with whom I had prayed Saturday. She was in tears as she told me that the vote to elect Congressman Michael Johnson as the next Speaker of the House of Representatives had been unanimous within the party. She then explained to me what few would understand, but which intercessors need to know Given the climate in the House of Representatives right now, a unanimous vote was humanly impossible. This vote was a miracle and an answer to prayer. She thanked me for being obedient to reach out to her on Saturday, as that had prompted her to pray too and also share my message with others on Capitol Hill. Representative Johnson has even stated personally that he had been praying, and even though he had never considered running, on Saturday the Lord made it clear to him that he was to run. This, she says, is the essence of intercessors for America, and indeed it is. God inspires, prompts, leads us to pray in accordance with his will, then he allows us the joy and privilege of witnessing his miraculous answers to the prayers he has prompted. He could do it all without us, but instead he chooses to use us. And sometimes his action is conditioned on the prayers of his saints in response to his prompting. She says, God gave me a prophetic prayer and I, would, I know of others who were also prompted prophetically regarding this. This was so orchestrated by Holy Spirit. But she says, God gave me a prophetic prayer, and now we see that the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous did avail much. We have witnessed firsthand the promise of Haggai 2 that God's shaking serves as a blessing to remove many who are in power, to replace them with those he has chosen who bear his signet ring of authority. I pray that this testimony encourages you, she says. God is still anointing and placing people in positions of influence for our good. Undeniably, the power of intercession played an integral part in this entire situation. What seemed like a situation of chaos and confusion was, in fact, an orchestrated means of God manifesting His sovereignty and authority on this earth. She says, I hope you will share this testimony widely as an encouragement to all intercessors. Also, I want to encourage us all to continue praying what God said to pray, because Johnson's election as speaker is not the end of the story. God gave us the prayer points. Johnson will need to be bold, to walk in strength, tempered in grace, and be equipped to speak forth words of hope over our nation. By praying as God has directed us, may we see this new Speaker of the House empowered 
by the Holy Spirit to stay the course. I hope this blesses you as much as it has me, she says. God is moving, and we have a hope that must not be ashamed. Amen. And before I pray, one more thing before I pray for the speaker. I want to mention, I know some of you saw me last night on Flashpoint with my friend Gene Bailey. Kevin Sorbo was also on promoting his new movie, Miracle in East Texas, which opens this Sunday and Monday, 29th and 30th. It's based on a true story and sounds absolutely amazing. Please take your family and friends to see it. Hollywood doesn't like these wholesome movies from outside their control. Those who control the movie industry actually make it very hard for them to be shown. The only way for Christian-based films to succeed is through word-of-mouth promotion. And for those of us who want wholesome entertainment to support them by attending, go see this movie. Take your kids. Let's get behind it. And now let's pray. Father, thank you for this miracle in the house. I also believe you are thanking those who prayed as your spirit has led us. Many in the body of Christ are becoming aware that you want to partner with your kids working in and through us to accomplish your purposes. Please increase this revelation. We ask now for wisdom and revelation to be given to Speaker Johnson. Wisdom and revelation be given him. Lead him in this important role, guiding his decisions and actions. Keep him free from unnecessary distractions and inappropriate influences. Surround him with the right people, staff, advisors, and those who will faithfully pray for him. Give him great grace to lead in this very turbulent time and great boldness. You have prepared him. We know you will now lead him. May he be a beacon of hope for America. We pray for protection over him, his family, and his staff. Raise up many to pray for him. Surround him with angels and your holy presence. May he walk in great peace, enabling him to be led by Holy Spirit, the mind of Christ, and your heart. Teach him more and more your ways. Make him a modern day Joseph and Daniel. And we ask for these things in Jesus' mighty name. And our decree we decree once again with great assurance, bold faith, America shall be saved. Amen. Well, today's post, at least most of it, was contributed by Cynthia Dunbar and Intercessors for America. You can use the link and find them. They are just the best. Mrs. Dunbar is an attorney, an author, a constitutional scholar, a professor of government, a former law professor, and an Intercessors for America board member. Dunbar has been extensively involved in government, governmental relations and public policy regarding education and curriculum. You can find more about her. She's an extensive wonderful resume, 
accomplished much. God is using her wonderful ways. You can find out more about her at the link we've given you, DunbarForAmerica.com. Well, thank you for praying. We are making a difference, big time. And we will continue to do so. So thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you again. Please join me on Monday.